Hi, this is Randy Harper with Buckeye Coffee Roasters. I want to introduce you to the new line of 2018 BC models. This uh, goes from our little 300 all the way up to our uh, 24 pound unit. We've added some really cool features that really make it top end, even in the smaller category. So we're going to talk about those in just a moment. One of the most significant changes on the 2018 line is we've uh, added new manual dial dampers. And these aren't cheap dampers like some machines. These have the pipe inside of a pipe that opens up uh, percentage-wise from uh, 1 to 10, and you turn that uh, from uh, right to left to adjust it, as you can see, going up to 1 to 10. And because of that, we decided to leave the uh, electronic uh, control on there where you can adjust the uh, fan speed, but we generally recommend that when you're first getting started, always crank that speed up to 100%. We're going to show you that in just a moment. If you can bear with me in our uh, cluttered workshop, we're waiting to get into a bigger shop as things have grown dramatically. But anyway, uh, it happens to be uh, June, the middle of June here, a little bit past the middle of June, and we're going through a severe heat wave. I think we're expected 116 degrees today. Right now we're at a nice cool 103 degrees. But here's the fan speed control, and you might remember on the typical BC units that didn't have the manual dial damper, you would adjust it, maybe start it off at 20 or 30, which would kick on the fan, and you basically had three or four different speeds within that category as you went up to 70 or 80 and it, it while it worked great it was not as accurate so what we're going to do is turn on the machine here and when you turn on the machine it powers up the uh, unit uh, the uh, Omron digital controls make sure your drum speed is on about 50 or 60 percent now that's not uh, RPM but that drum speed control is on the back here along with the USB port for the built-in uh, computer data logging system. And so looking at your controls here, uh, this is your fan. Uh, I recommend you turn it up to full speed because now you're going to be adjusting the roaster based on the uh, manual dial damper. Before you start the roaster, I'll give it a quick test uh, to make sure all the components are working. That, this is the igniter. It says roasting on it. Uh, you want to hear it buzz when you press it. This is the timer which turns on the little timer down here on the BC2. A little bit different than on the BC3 and up. Uh, to reset it you just click that button right there. And then this is for the cooling fan. And the BC2 has a high powered cooling fan. You really don't need mixing arms. In fact, mixing arms seem to be more of a problem with these smaller roasters because they left, lift the beans up and they can overflow the uh, tray. What we found is if you're doing a full two pounds, just simply turn the uh, mixing tray as it pours in there and it evenly disperses it and in two to three minutes cools it off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get started with a uh, roast and we're going to go through the basic uh, setup which is pretty much the same as long as you keep your airflow now at 100 percent and control it through the manual dial damper. You'll find as we give a review on the BC5 we've added a bunch more little uh, improvements but even on this model we've got the uh, steel knob now and uh, you just feel like you got a lot more control over precision on the gas pressure and uh, some other internal upgrades uh, along with our uh, little light. Don't know if you can see that in the picture, uh, but we got a little light. We actually added that toward the end of the 2017 models, but uh, they're awesome and I love the fact that you got your on off switch because you don't always want that thing blasting away. So let's get started. First things first, you uh, make sure your gas is turned on and, uh, and that uh, you've checked the line for uh, leaks and everything. And then you hit the igniter button while turning on the gas, making sure that your air control is set at about 20 or so. So here we go. I'm turning up the gas. I've got it up to about two and a half now. And if you feel like it's not lighting quickly like it didn't, it will shut off and try it again. Um, maybe I didn't have enough airflow. So let's just shut it off and try it again. Okay, there it lit. 
and we'll, we can show you a picture of the flames. Uh, these have three burners. They're very capable of doing 10 to 12 minute roast, or if you want to extend that to 14 minutes or longer, uh, you can easily do that. So you can get five roasts an hour of two pounds. So uh, we're, right now we're going to let it preheat. We got this at set it, uh, cut, cut it back down to 20%. Uh, we've got the airflow knob at 100%. We currently have the uh, gas pressure at 2.6 about, and we're going to let that uh, preheat for about five uh, to 10 minutes here in Arizona at a, a hundred and some degrees. It will actually preheat a lot faster than that. Okay, while the roaster's preheating, I'm uh, getting ready to pour in two pounds. It's actually about two pounds, one and a half ounces of uh, Red Sea Blend. This comes out of Royal Coffee. By the way, a shout out to Royal Coffee, one of my favorite places to get coffee if you're going to buy by the bag. Uh, you can get some great prices. Everything sold on the internet, and there's about four locations in the U.S. is rated 86 and above, so really high quality coffee. This Red Sea is from each side of the mountains uh, on the Red Sea, so you got uh, Ethiopia and Yemen. So we're gonna let it preheat. Actually, we've got it up to where we wanna preheat, and then we're gonna do a roast. All right, I've, I've told you many times before, when you're doing your first roast, uh, you may uh, find it beneficial to let it heat up a little hotter than you normally do, like right now I've got it on 426 on the uh, bean temperature. I'm gonna cut off the gas by hitting the igniter or the roasting button it cuts off the solenoid and cuts off the gas so I don't need to turn the gas down unless I want to and so I'm getting ready to drop the beans uh, I'm gonna let it drop down just a little bit and then we're gonna get started okay I'm resetting the timer I've got the airflow at 2 but I'm not uh, kicking the gas back on yet I'm gonna go ahead and charge the beans. I'm going to let them uh, go down in there and uh, get used to the temperature for about half a minute or so and then we'll kick on the gas. And to kick on the gas I'll just simply kick on the igniter button because I've already got it set. Uh, and I'll probably crank down the uh, uh, pressure to two or under. So I'm down just a little bit over the two pound limit, which I normally don't go over, but I happened to grab a little extra and I didn't want to stick it back into the uh, container. So here we are now at about 45 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and kick it on the gas. As you can see, it's ignited now. The flames are burning. We're at 20% airflow. We're actually at two and a half on the pressure, which I think is going to be a little too much. So I'm going to cut it down to two. Now because this is the first roast, I may have made a mistake on cutting it down so quickly because I really didn't let the machine heat up as long as uh, you normally would as you're going into your second roast. And you can kind of see that because you see the bean temperature dropping down all the way to the 160 mark. And usually within a minute and a half or less, here it is bottomed out at 167.9 at a minute and 20 some seconds, 25 seconds, and now it's starting to climb. So that's pretty good. If you ever uh, realize that it's not climbing after two minutes, you've probably done something wrong. Either you forgot to kick the gas back on, or you got the gas too low, the airflow too high, or something like that. So we're gonna let that uh, go through the drying phase, which will go from uh, the turnaround point, which was, what did I say, 160, 7.9 or something like that and it will rise all the way up to 335 and we want to do that uh, Generally within five to seven minutes is my target on one of these uh, Roasters this size so we're gonna let that go for a minute Not bore you with that. And we'll be right back Just want to mention a couple other things first of all if you haven't had uh, cold brew coffee, give it a try and get it done right or, or buy one of your own little cold brewer. Uh, I think it's the Hario or whatever has one for 16, 17 bucks through Amazon which does an awesome job. Um, I use about 50% of that coffee uh, which just comes concentrated after you let it sit and uh, then some water and a little bit of flavored creamer for a nice cold drink on a hot summer day. Okay, done with the commercial. 
You'll notice in general a lot of times the airflow, especially after it's bottomed out and it's turned around, is about 100 degrees or more different. This may stay that way for some time or it may uh, catch up with each other. Part of it's going to depend on how much airflow you are putting into the uh, roaster, which I like my rate of climb. I'm at four and a half minutes at 280 degrees and uh, I don't see an uh, excessive amount of chaff in the uh, coffee, the Red Sea, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the airflow at two. If I felt like uh, there was excessive chaff or smoke, which there shouldn't be yet, um, as far as smoke goes, I would uh, <clears throat> bump up the airflow a little bit. By the way, speaking of smoke, I've got a smoke suppression system that I did not turn on that I'm going to go ahead and turn on so I don't fill my shop up with smoke from uh, these tests. And that should kick in in a moment or two. Yeah, because smoke is starting to pour out of the exhaust uh, right now. But anyway, so here we are. We're going through the drying phase, getting close to the end of the drying phase. It's 307 degrees at 5 minutes 30 seconds. That's right about the target that I want it to be. I like it to be between five and seven minutes when it hits 335. I think the rate of rise is still pretty good. Um, I don't think it's excessively fast. I'm pretty satisfied doing a uh, 12 minute roast on these roasters. Uh, no more than 14 minutes, generally speaking. So if I do a 12 minute roast, I can get five roasts an hour because I can have another batch ready to go as soon as I drop these. So here we are at six minutes, uh, if I'm seeing right, 10 seconds, and we're almost done uh, with the uh, drying phase. We'll let it uh, video for until that change. And hopefully I've got it in focus to where you can see the numbers. Yeah, here we are, 335 degrees at six minutes and 30 seconds. So that's awesome. Okay, I decided to move it over here. I, I do see a little bit of chaff uh, still in the uh, roast, so I'm going to bump up the airflow to about 30% uh, right now. And my rate of rise, we're at 7 minutes, 10 seconds, 351 degrees. So I think my rate of rise is still pretty good. Um, I'll probably hit uh, first crack, which I can't remember on these... Uh, beans if it's around 390 but I'll probably hit that at, no, actually I just heard first crack now just bar barely beginning we got the uh, hot air temperature at 406 we got the bean temperature at 362 at 7 minutes 40 seconds that might have just been an exceptionally small bean because I don't hear a lot of other cracks yet but if you can see there is a little bit of smoke in the drums, so I'm going to bump it up to 40% to help. Yeah, it is going into full uh, first crack. I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe if I shut up. It's 409 on the hot air. It's 375 on the bean, and we're at 8 minutes 10 seconds. So we're, we're doing right along where I want because when it goes into first crack, you uh, will want you now go into the, the roasting phase. And you may want to take that one to three minutes, uh, depending on how you want to do the roast. Because my rate of rise seems to be pretty high. I'm bumping down the gas from 2 kPa. Uh, and this is with a, uh, a propane model, by the way. It would be different with natural gas. And I'm bumping it down to about 1.4. Can you hear first crack? Let's take a couple samples. I still see a little bit of chaff. A little bit of smoke, a couple beans are jumping out because I threw a couple more ounces in there than I should have. And uh, generally you don't have to uh, um, take the spoon out all the way anyway to see them. But I wanted you to get a view of it. I'll put my light on there. Oh yeah, we're going into a nice full crack. I'm actually, because it's the uh, rate of rise is very fast, I'm actually cutting off the gas at 9 minutes 19 seconds and I'm just gonna let it do its thing it's 409 on the uh, bean actually they've caught up now it's 409 on the bean and it was 409 on the hot air and because I'm bumping up the hot air flow it's actually gonna bring a little bit 
cooler air in so the hot air is, is now starting to drop but the uh, climb on the bean temperature is still pretty fast. We're at 418 at 9 minutes 49 seconds. So this is going to be just a little over a 10 minute roast. Whoops, got some runaways there. It's probably just going to be about a 10 and a half minute roast, maybe less. Yeah, probably less because uh, this Ethiopian you really don't need to take up past about 425, which is where we are. So we're at 425. I'm kicking on my cooling fan. We're at 420. Well, okay, we're almost at 425. Okay, we're at 425 now. 10 minutes, 17 seconds. Let's uh, drop these babies. Let me turn it down. And notice I'm using the manual uh, mixing arm, <laughs> turning arm, as it uh, is pouring out two pounds. I don't know how much it weighs now, but it did weigh two pounds and. Uh, two ounces and that will cool off within about two to three minutes let's take a look at it sometimes these cameras don't give a nice view uh, with the lighting and everything and it looks uneven but it's a very even roast keep it in mind that this is uh, two different coffees it's a blend so you're gonna see a little bit of difference uh, in the coloration but it's a nice uh, full two pound little bit over two pound roast and you're ready to charge another uh, uh, set of beans and that was in about 10 minutes and I don't know 20 seconds at the most but we're now at 11 minutes 22 so in about two more minutes that'll be cooled off so now your second roast is already in doing its thing because the temperature is right where you wanted it and you can repeat the process keeping in mind that from your second roast on if you're going to do profiling it's best to do because now your machine is fully heated so we hope you enjoyed that and uh we hope you can get on with the uh, BC Roasters. I tell you what, there are some look-alikes that look similar to the BC2, uh, a little bit smaller, but they're not made industrial style like this. And, and I'll tell you what, I, I've not seen a better uh, manual dial damper, especially on a smaller roaster where you've got precise control and it's really built well. These are beautiful machines. I uh, hope you can get one and enjoy it, whether it's a BC 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 14, or 24. Have fun and roast. But if you can do it, don't roast an AZ in the summer where it's 120 degrees.